Welcome to the Octave Sweat Equity Podcast, a show designed exclusively for gym owners and fitness enthusiasts like you. I'm your host, Mark Forzi. Today's guest is Estian Ferreira, owner of one of the most successful multi-location gyms in the country and hugely respected in the fitness community. Estian prioritizes his members and looks for ways to add value to their lives in and outside of the gym. So let's dive straight in. Estian, great to have you here. Um, and I've been looking forward to having this conversation with you. You are one of the people in the fitness industry that I personally look up to. Um, you've got six gyms so far and growing. So why don't you start off by just telling us a bit about yourself and how you got to where you're at now? Yeah. Um, thanks, Mark. Those are uh, very, very kind words. Um, I think if I, if I go back a little bit further, um, I've always been, always liked sport and I, I always liked like the business side of things as well. So like growing up, uh, I don't know if you remember, I'm not sure if your kids still do it now, like those raffle tickets you get at school where yeah. kids like set up the raffle books. So um, I always used to win those competitions at school because I'd get my mom, who's a very creative person, and she would take me to the shops and we'd buy like, um, go to like a soap factory and buy like little fizz balls and soaps and I would put together deals for people. So if they buy like five tickets, then they get something for free and 10 tickets, they get something for free. So I always like the, um, the, the business side of things. And then I love sports, so um, I always wanted to get you know head in that head in that direction. Um, and then it was quite a long time coming, like off to school. I think it was in 20, 2013, um when I really um, found CrossFit initially. Um, it was uh, Mark Liber that kind of introduced me to it, and I told him, "Okay, I want to I want to do this." And I think he said to me, "Look, it's not it's not so easy. You don't just." You don't just open a open up a gym. I was like, no, 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 don't worry. I'm going to do this. Mm. And then four years later, um, after a few failed attempts, we we finally opened up opened up our first location. And yeah, that's just kind of kind of what happened. A lot of a lot of struggling in between. A lot of like a lot of luck and a lot of people um, supporting me mm. um, in between all of that. Um, and now we're here. Awesome. It's it's always cool to hear like the early days, like someone's younger life, um, who has been successful in business. It, it it sounds like it's in your blood, which is which is really cool. But it's one thing being entrepreneurial and having you know a vision and starting a business. Uh, it's another thing completely scaling a business, um, which so far you you are managing to do really well. Um, can you tell me a few lessons in scaling up that you've learned along the way? Um, I mean, I think, I think the first, the, the first lesson for maybe for scaling up, for starting a business for me uh, personally is that it's, 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 it's always evolving. It's an ever evolving project and process. So it's, it never works out perfectly. It's, um, mm. you know, one of my, my favorite things that I heard a few years ago is success like speed. So, you know, you make a decision not a hasty decision, but you make a decision and you back it and you and you follow through. Um, but in terms of in terms of scaling up, it was it, it's it's purely the like it's the people the mm -hmm. people around around me um, who have become partners and um, you know part of the team. They were just really they're really good at what they do, and you know I wasn't going to be able to to mm -hmm. to hold them back. Um, so I'd say that uh, maybe not a lesson in in scaling, but a rule of, of of scaling or starting anything is it needs to be you need to know it's the right people you're not going to do it by yourself or at least i couldn't i mm -hmm. couldn't do it myself um so i think i would say that lesson number one is a lot of gym gym owners go through a process where they you know maybe they start employing a, a couple of coaches and um, they've got someone cleaning the gym and 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 maybe they've even employed someone to do some some admin work mm -hmm. and they've and they start filling up and then the next step feels like I'm going to open up another. Yeah, I'm going to open up. This is the next, the next step. And um, I think most of the time it's it's not out it's not how it works. You you kind of you might even regret doing that. So yeah. it needs to be it needs to be for for the right reasons. Um, it needs to be for 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 me. It was um, it was about the people. Uh, they wanted to do it, and 
and and I wanted to to support them. It wasn't for really for for any other reason. Mm. Um, and then we made sure that we had our our systems and process and everything like really solidly in place to make sure that they yeah. we had as little um, cracks as possible. Yeah. So there's quite a quite a bit to unpack there in terms of people. How, how do you identify the right people? Obviously, from what I can hear, you saying they identify you. Um, but how do you, what do you look for in somebody to take on as a business partner or even a, just a team member, like employee? Um, well, no, go, let's say going back to to school and sport. Um, specifically, I was I was a team sport person. Like that's what I loved in, yeah. in high school. We played team sport. Um, you know, my early days, I had ambitions to maybe play rugby professionally. Mm. Um, and kind of those lessons I, I learned back in the day, um, it's it's how I run the business. We, mm. we run it like a team. So, you know, I've got my position. That's my responsibility. Yeah. Everyone everyone is relying on me to do those to do those duties. And it's the same with everybody in our team, whether it's someone that's been there for, for, for six or seven years or someone that joined the team last month. Mm. Um, we're accountable and we, we know what needs to happen. So we run it like a team. And in terms of identifying people, I think you you recognize the people that, that think the way you think and, and feel the way you feel about something. Mm. So, you know, the people we've added into the team over the last few years are uh, a, a, um, a chartered accountant, which is Greg's is, is my, my business partner and my, and my kind of my, my go-to guy. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, other guys who are engineers, it's really different personalities. Yeah. But they felt the same way. They didn't want to work a corporate job. They didn't want to. They didn't want to feel stuck. Mm -hmm. They wanted to work even harder, but it, it needed to be purpose driven. Yeah. You know, they were seeking a um, a calling, and and hopefully that's what we're doing now. So it's people with a shared purpose and a shared vision. Yeah. For what you're trying to create. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and obviously, I think we all know you can have the best people in the world, but if if you don't have systems and processes. You know, it, it's, it, it won't be efficient and those people won't operate to their best potential. Um, you touched on systems and processes and what are your, what are your like top three processes that you guys have created um, that you feel have been most impactful to the running of, of, of your business? Um, yeah, there's quite a few. Um, and, and I, and I think if, if, if you're listening to this, it's it's important that it's systems and processes and not to make it a like a corporate thing. It's not to make it a you know, it sounds like quite a boring thing, but but the truth behind systems and processes is when you have those things in place, it means that you've got more time and more energy to focus on what's really important, which is our members and the service we provide and the value we provide to our members. So if we've got those things um set, we know that we've got we've got energy to focus on the things we like to do. Mm. Um and when we started initially, I had I thought back then I had systems and processes, but it was mm. it was all over the place. I mean, mm. you know, you would back then before Octave Box Champ, we would have an idea of how many members we had, and we could run debit orders and all those things. But I mean, it was it was all over the place. So now I would say that you kind of to simplify it, there's two things that you that you focus on. You focus on retention, so retaining your clients, and you focus on sales, mm. bringing in clients. Um, you know, it's not it's not one or the other. So um, what is your sales process? How are you how are you getting people to join? Um, you know, we've got a we've got a whole flow of of from when people consider joining the gym, from when they first make contact, um, how we want them to feel once they come into the gym, what is the whole, you know, what does that flow look like? Mm. Um, how do we follow up afterwards? And then their member journey would start. Um, and then the same with retention. When are we following up with people? What are the what are the things we're saying? Uh, how do we want them to feel a specific time in their member journey at Willoway? Yeah. And how do we make sure that they continue to get results? So there's probably a, quite a few systems and processes within that. But if to simplify what you're asking is, what are you doing to to bring people in? Mm. And what are you doing to retain people? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's there's such a fine line that between you have to have systems and, you know, whenever you have a challenge or or something goes wrong the way i always think about it in our businesses if someone drops the ball um including myself we always think about it as okay so how can we create a process 
to make sure this never happens again. Yeah. Um, and that's great, but you, you, you almost want to make sure that you aren't over engineering, um, operations in a, in a business and also keeping it simple. I like what you said about having the two categories, like there's member acquisition and member retention. And we create processes around that because if you actually, if you cover those two things, you're actually covering, um, quite a lot. Yeah. Um, awesome. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it filters out further, obviously your uh, member acquisition or your, your sales side, um, you know, it goes to lots of different, lots of different components. Um, so, you know, with, for us, uh, a lot of the times I'll be the, the ideas person. I can come up with ideas. And, and like I said, someone like, uh, um, Ed Rix, who's, who's my, who's my partner is the guy that kind of puts the, yes. puts it into place and then he'll, he'll kind of build something and then I'll tell him, okay, like let's, let's simplify this, let's make it half as yeah half is complicated until it's eventually like a one like a one pager mm. and then we know okay this is something we can we can stick to and we can rather evolve it from there we can we can add mm. little bits and pieces um as we go um but let's first do let's first follow through with this and be consistent with this idea and then we'll see where that where that takes us yeah 100 percent. and obviously that's that's super important to establish that before you scale because if you don't have processes and systems and you scale it kind of all falls apart because there's no structure. Yeah. So speaking of that, you've obviously gone from one location to six locations and I believe more in the pipeline. What are your fundamentals in terms of what has to be in place and humming before you open another location? So, you know, some of them, the rules get broken. Some of them just, some of them just happen. You know, like, yeah. um, you know we've, we've opened up a location recently where, uh, almost tried not to do it. Like you know, we we told we told the landlord they approached us. We we you know we got to a point where we said like we're not going to do it now. It's, we don't. These are not. We've got specific months that we like to open up gyms. These are not the months that we open up a gym. And mm. and they kept coming back and kept coming back. And then the deal was just just too good. So mm. sometimes the, the the rules need to be broken, and and you just need to follow your gut. Um, but but for the most part, the I think the rules that we really stick to is number one, who is the person that's that's going to open that open that gym to understand our culture. Is it going to be the same feeling? The community is going to be different, but is it going to be the same feeling and the same service offering that we can do at all the other gyms? You know, mm. when people from, let's say, uh, all the way Linwood, where I am most of the time, mm. if someone from there goes to Somerset or to Morning Glen in Johannesburg, it's going to look the, it's well, it's going to look the same, and and some of the things might be a little bit yeah. different. The coaches will be different, but the feeling should be yeah should be very much. Should be very core much the same. Core principles are there. The core principles are there. So that will be the, you know, the kind of like the the feeling we need to get right first, and then we start looking at um, the area. Um, yeah. How close are we to highway exits? Um, what is the, you know, what is the space that's available? We've got a spreadsheet that tells us, you know, what equipment we're going to need for X amount of members within a, within a class. Let me see how many of those boxes we can tick, and then it goes back to a kind of like a a gut feeling. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's, it's, it's progressed over the years. Um, awesome. But a lot of it is still just like what we think in the moment, what we think is going to work and then we take a chance. I suppose, like I asked you the question, essentially like it makes it sound like growth is super planned and linear and actually gr growth is very messy. Yeah. Um, and we know that very well. It's uh, Richard Branson says, you know, you should bite off more than you can chew and then chew like hell. Um, That's so, right. Even hearing about like your spreadsheet of this is this is the equipment that we would need for X number of members. Um, I'm sure you learned that the hard way of like, we've got too many members, we need more equipment and yep. things have to break a little bit for you to learn and grow. Um, so it's hindsight is, is the perfect science, but it's always nice to hear from someone who's done it um, to try and help those who are embarking on it um, to make the right decisions. And, yeah. So, I mean, uh, talking about those, I mean, we've made, I've made, uh, like I said, I'm lucky I've got a, like a really good, a really good team and they clean up a lot of my messes. I've made a lot of mistakes. Um, but last year, at least this was a funny mistake and, and Rebel were willing to meet us halfway. Um, but myself and JP was our owner in, in Somerset. We also, we went through the spreadsheet, we ordered our, our equipment, what we wanted. And somewhere there was a miscommunication in terms of, um, you know, is this on the spreadsheet, is this set of dumbbells? 
or is it one, one dumbbell? And um, once you go to some of the heavier weights, it becomes one yes. dumbbell. Like that's how you order from Revolts. It's yes. one 15 or 20 kg dumbbell. And I think he sort of is a set okay. of, of, of dumbbells. Um, and that gym is on the first floor. So it's also a little bit of carrying. And my, my wife was seven months pregnant at the time when we opened up last year. And we just had a shitload of dumbbells. Like we were just offloading dumbbell after dumbbell. We had a, a wall of dumbbells. Yeah. Eventually we said, no, something isn't <laughs> like something isn't right here. Let's let's back away some of these dumbbells. And we ended up, I don't know how many dumbbells we returned to Rebel. But those are still like you still make silly mistakes. Yeah, of course. Um along the way. Nothing is nothing is foolproof. Uh, it's just part of the part of the part of the journey. Yeah. Yeah, I know, I know that I know that very well. Um you know, when when you release a new feature, for example, as a software company, you think you think you know exactly how it should work. You know, and as a team, we we obviously put a lot of effort into it. But it's not until you actually release it that you figure out what the shortcomings are. And it's through that whole process that it, it gets better, obviously. Um so you've been through quite a lot in terms of this whole journey of starting and and getting to where you are now and through that time um you know we had situations like covid um for example where you know a lot changed especially for yes. <laughs> for the fitness industry but after covid we've seen a really really positive boom in micro gyms um, and people training more at micro gyms as opposed to big box gyms um have you what have you kind of observed over the last few years so yeah for us covid was the actual lockdown part in in the moment it was it was obviously it was bad um but you only realize how how difficult that time was if you if you really think back to it like mm. you know, no one would go back no one would go back to that time uh, coming out of the lockdown it was probably the most fun time mm. to to be in our industry because everybody just wanted social interaction everybody just wanted to get out of the house and 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 just come do something um, you don't know what you have till you've lost it you don't know what you have until you lost yeah. it exactly so everybody was happy uh, we could have done anything we could have done uh, every class every day was 500 burpees for time and people would have shown up with a smile on their face like, i wouldn't have shown up okay. that was that was that was and that, and that was pretty much it so it was really a nice time um but it's also a dangerous time so uh like we've got a rule by us where if things are going well you work hard if things aren't going well you work hard that's yeah. like you always stay humble and you just put your head down and work. And, you know, those few months or even up to a year after COVID, it was really exciting. But then it kind of starts going back to normal. People start getting back to the back to the office and mm -hmm. um, it becomes the same challenges. You know, I'm struggling to get to the gym in the afternoon because there's load shedding and there's traffic and all those things. So um, it needs to it needs to evolve. And and where I think uh, our our industry is evolving too. And well, not what I think. This is actually a kind of like a little exercise we did with with everybody that works at Willowell, our whole team. Is what does the fitness industry look like in the next five or ten years? Mm. And kind of to to sum it up, where we think it's going is it just becomes more and more personal. Mm. It's not like it's not necessarily AI and um, technology or or a type of workout or type of equipment. It becomes more and more personal. Mm. It's you know it's an hour in the gym or forty five minutes in the gym, however long your sessions are. Um, and that is, and then it becomes how, how are you supporting people's lives outside of the gym? Yeah. And yeah, that's what I would say is kind of where we, where we're leading to. It's kind of counterintuitive because it's, you think that I, I've got my gym membership so that I can come to the gym. Um, but I love like you thinking about it more from a holistic, a holistic, a holistic perspective. Yeah. Um, please tell me more about that because, because I, I really resonate with what you're saying. So you know, for us at the at the moment, it, it's it's still learning and it's still it's still figuring figuring things out, and we and we're trying a few things. Um, but it is the relationship you have with people, obviously outside of that hour. It's still what they pay for is still an hour of of good training, and, and they yeah. need to see results. It's not. Um, it's it's the community is nice. It's not the community. It's mm. um it's not the water machine that's always got cold. It's none of those things. Mm. They need to see results. So people might be happy for a while, but if they don't see results of a of a, a, a decent period that's still what they pay for that's that's still what a gym membership is um 
but like I said, where it's leading to is you need to be able to empower people outside of the gym. So how are they staying healthy outside of the gym? How are we educating people on um, on nutrition, on sleep, on stress, um, on all the other factors that play a role in in, in living a better life? Because that's essentially what we're trying to coach people on. We're trying to be mm. um, people that, that that coach you to be able to live a fuller, um, freer life. Mm. Um, so those are things we're working on slowly. It's mainly through education. Um, and there's a few other small things that we try and do outside of the gym to to make things more exciting. And maybe that's more on the community building side. We yeah. try and work with people. Yeah, so it's not just the the workout that they that they're there for. I think it's very clever because it's it's creating deeper levels of retention. So it's not just like you say, not just the hour in the gym, but like um, if there's more to it than just that, um, I, I form a bigger bond. Hmm. Um, yeah, it's like it's if you're walking into a gym where people have got barbells and kettlebells and there's a rig up, it's not just any person that's walking into that yeah. gym. Like that's a person that's um, probably an A-type personality. So they, they're looking to improve yeah. themselves. They're looking to get better. Um, it could be someone that's built up the courage. I mean, we've had people that say. Um, you know, we've been coming to the spa across the road for three years and for three years I've been saying I want to walk into the gym and mm. today I, I yes, walk into the gym. So it's, exactly. you know, it's people that they've got like, they've got some courage and they've got some guts to, yeah. to be able to, to try and um, be a better version of themselves. I don't know. Mm. I don't always like saying it sounds weird to say it like that, but to, yeah. to get better. Um, so we need to be better. Mm. We need to be able to offer them those opportunities to, to empower themselves and, and they're looking for more than just an hour of training. They're looking to yeah. understand their training, why exactly. their body does, or how their body works, how nutrition works, how all those things work, and and that's our job. So we need to we need to work hard. Yeah, hundred percent. Like I, I remember in my when I first started doing CrossFit in twenty thirteen, um, the reason I found it so compelling is because I wasn't just doing a workout; I was learning about why are we doing the workout in the way we're doing it and why workouts are structured in a certain way. And with that came the nutrition and yeah. it's, it's a, a holistic thing. Um, and from that point I went and did my level one and I never wanted to become a CrossFit coach. I just did it because I wanted to learn more and you know, yeah. um, so that, that speaks a lot to building someone's why they're training. You know, it's not just, I'm here to, lose weight or build muscle it's more a, a lifestyle of this is how i want to live exactly um, yeah i'm just uh, i i meant to ask you and i i hope that i'm kind of not stepping on really. on toes i know you you're open to um chatting um you're obviously affiliated at a stage yeah. and you aren't anymore and I actually just wanted to ask you your reasoning behind it and, and so on. Yeah, no, of course, uh, Mark, that's, uh, you know, there's, a, there's a, a couple of reasons. I think that it's important for me to to start off with the fact that, you know, we started as a CrossFit affiliate. Personally, I love CrossFit. You know, I still compete in, yeah. in CrossFit competitions or have in the, in the past. I'm a, a massive fan of CrossFit. And I think if I still had to say one one methodology and it is, I mean, it's, it's quite broad. It pretty much covers everything, but I would still say that, um, you know, CrossFit would be my, um, my go-to one methodology to, to, to focus on my, my personal training on. Um, but where we were going was, it's a little bit different. Um, mm -hmm. and what we were trying to achieve was a bit different. So, you know, we've got people that like CrossFit and they would identify as, as CrossFitters, mm -hmm. um, and it's going to work well for them. You know, we've got a running club. Um, mm -hmm. we've got lots of people that are just trying to become, better runners. So it's not necessarily a, a CrossFit focus. Mm. Um, we've got people with, you know, with, with other goals and our, our kind of fitness model just started changing and, and, and what we, what we thought would be really good for people and what we like to do. Yeah. So, you know, we went away from, from that and, and, and now we've got a, let's call it like a hybrid fitness blend where there's CrossFit style stuff and there's things that you would recognize, you know, you recognize a wall ball or a yes. power clean and things like that coming to some of our classes. Yeah. Um, but we'll also have some functional bodybuilding days. So we'll do a lot of, a lot of 90% of our strength training that we'll do would be with a tempo. Yeah. So slowing things down and making yeah. sure people are taking care of their bodies. It's a, a very high stress life we already live. 
And if we put too much stress on top of that, um, it becomes, um, you know, it's almost like we're working in reverse. We want people to get results. Yeah. yeah. So that was kind of the, the back end side of it. Um, and the side that really excited us and, and ultimately was why we decided to do it was we want to be a proudly South African brand. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, like I, I look at America and I'm not sure if you've always like the same joke, but if you've watched Mr. Deeds, uh, Winterton, Chest, Field, Bull, Iowa, like when it's like this perfect little town. Yeah. And that's how I see parts of America is like this. this the, when you go there, like you go for a workout, mm. that's the hard part of your day. Yeah. You know, if you live in South Africa, you go for a workout. <laughs> that's the easy That's part. when we relax. That's like, <laughs> this is the nice time of our, of our day. And, yeah. and we, you know, we're so, we're so proud to be a part of that. And we're so, you know, we're proud to be South African and we want people to say like, we're going to stay here. Like mm. we got load shedding, we got issues. We're going to be here for that. Mm. Like we're going to be the change. We're going to try and make it better. Um, and that's not well away. That's just the mindset of, of, of people. Yes. Um, and that was ultimately what, what we wanted to say. This is a South African awesome. brand. We're going to do things. We're going to do things our way and we're going to, and we're going to be for the South African people. Yeah. And building a standalone brand that you yeah, control your own destiny. Yeah. Awesome. I, I, you know, when I was thinking about this, I also just thought about the fact that if you're opening multiple locations and you have to affiliate each location, if your, if your goal is to scale, that does become quite a big kind of cost constraint yeah. as well. Um, but no, it's always interesting to hear. And, you know, the, the funny thing is I'm interviewing Chad um, next week, who's our Africa CrossFit country manager. And yes. I was gathering quick questions from some of the top people in the industry. And I mean, I don't care whether you're affili affiliated or not. I still think you, you're one of those people. And that's kind of why I, it sparked me wanting to ask the question. Yeah. Um, thanks for asking, yeah. Mark. It's good to, <laughs> good to be able to explain it on yeah. your platform. Awesome. Um, Essien, I meant to ask you, what is the model that you guys follow in terms of when you open a new location? Um, yeah. So, you know, Mark, what I, and that, this is, you can be early in the game and you get lucky. You've got that advantage of being early in the game, whatever industry it is. Um, or you can, you can join a few years down the line, like we did in, only in 2017. Um, and then what you have is, is, is you have the, kind of like the, you've gathered some information and, and, and you've observed what works and, and what, the, and what doesn't work. And, mm -hmm. you know, where I've trained before and I've trained some, you know, I've trained at some really, really great gyms. You know, I started, I said I started with Mark um, Harold and Volna at, at, at PBM and people that really taught me a lot about about training. Mm -hmm. And you know the one thing that I that I learned, or one of the things that I learned along the way, I saw along the way was that the people that open up gyms um, or people within that, you know, they, they came from that gym, so they yes. came from that CrossFit box, and they've opened up more yes. CrossFit boxes. And you know, I kept thinking to myself, this is so much like these talented people, and this could be something a lot bigger. But these people are doing their own mm. their own thing. And it's fragmented. It's fragmented. Like this is so, like you know we we could be doing this. We could be building something together. Um, and then that became that became my plan. Like we first first we just wanted to get our one location up and running. And if that was it, like mm. our initial business plan was 153 members in five years. 153. 153 members in five years. Um, this is the game plan. If this is where we get to. Mm. And I'm completely happy. I coached 12 classes a day back then. <laughs> um, like this is the life. Yeah. You know, we've made it. It's fine. And then as time goes, obviously you 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 get you become a bit more ambitious and and things change. And then we like I referred back to that game plan. I said, okay, well, I want people that are that think like me, that feel like what, or well, hopefully think differently, but feel like what I feel. Yeah. Um, let's open up more all the ways. And it started with with Rue, who was one of he was member number one, one of my first mm. coaches, and then he open up his his own location awesome. um, which essentially it, it works it works a lot like a like a franchise mm. um but they've been indoctrinated into your culture which is awesome understands the yeah. culture you know believes in in what we do because he was a member a paying member as well um and 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 really loved it and and you know we opened up our first or second location our first partner gym as we as we called it um, and it's a, yeah, it's like a combination. It's a franchise model, but but we offer a lot of support from from our side, and we're very involved. We, we still work like a team. It's still small enough that we all work like we one yeah like we one team. Um, 
and then it kind of you know it, it kind of grew from there you know then i had um a couple of other members daniel and and, and stefan have you know the, all these people have become good friends of mine and, and mm. training partners um you know then they said okay well you know we're engineers but we, we want to break away from this engineering lifestyle and yeah they opened up another one and, and, and so we kept growing now my brother-in-law's opened up in yes in johannesburg and yeah. it's like it's like-minded people um i want to be someone that can that can support and give people opportunities because that's what they're doing for me mm. they're giving me supporting me and they're giving me opportunities i want to you know i want to give that back um and now you know our client client services our head of client services uh mika um she's also a co-owner of the of the janisberg gym yeah so we we that's what kind of what we what we're going for i've got a couple thoughts here from what you've said um my first question to you is based on the point that like i i've seen a lot of gym owners with the opposite mindset of being quite threatened when a member or a coach of theirs has the ambition of opening their own gym. Um, and, you know, that always ends in tears. How do you create that environment that makes you approachable, that when someone has that ambition, they approach you and tell you openly and ask you if you want to work together? Well, maybe I'm not approachable. Maybe it's out of fear. No, <laughs> no, um, I think I just think it's the it's the culture that we've that like that we've built. Yeah, it's it's, it's how we are with each other. Um, you know, it's it's not to say that it's not going to happen in the future that it doesn't work out. You know, yes. that, that people are trying different things. Um, it's just that it's worked out up to up to this point. It's worked out, and and um, you know whether whether things sometimes fail and and sometimes don't. I'm just going to stick to what my purpose is and, and the type of person that I want to be. Yeah, you know that's this is the like the life that I want to live, uh, regardless of the um, the money you make or don't make. Um, mm -hmm. That's the person I want to be for people, and um, it, it 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 supports my lifestyle that I want to live and spend time with my family and my kids. Um, so that will be how I base the mm -hmm. the decision making. And sometimes people feel threatened, um, and and other times it's it's maybe just it's out of their comfort zone. So maybe it's not mm. something that they comfortable trying or, or, or doing, or yeah, um, they might not see the potential in that, in that person. And then that's also fine. Well, I think I agree with what you're saying. And what I would add is that having, having a personality of collaboration and not, not being scared of competition, you know, because what, what we see a lot is, the gym has coaches. One of the coaches opens their own gym down the road and they compete with each other and hate each other. And then there's always ugly vibes. Yeah. We see that so much. And every, almost every gym that opens, opens from, from another gym. Yeah. Right? So that, so you can imagine we see that quite a lot. Um, but you clearly have a collaborative mindset that's like, let's work together. And um, I think people can actually just feel that when they, when they, work with you um so really well done on, on creating that the other thing that i noticed just throughout our conversation is the people that you have in your team have roles that not a lot of micro gyms have like head of client service and the fact that your business partner is a chartered accountant um and i think that micro gyms Forget about that. They think like we just need coaches, yeah. Um, and the coaches will just do everything. <laughs> and that's it's actually not their their um, interest. Or so it's really cool to see that as well. I think that's something that gyms can learn from. Is like we've got clients and we need client service. Uh, we we bill people, so we need people who understand finance, etc. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's um, also something we've built over the years. Um, I think that the, the member services was my the first um let's call it like employment outside of the norm which is like your coaches and maybe some cleaning and social media um and it was one of the best like one of the best decisions yeah i ever made um because again it, it takes so much pressure off of the coaching team because yeah. they're not necessarily handling um uh, you know someone um forgetting their octave password yeah or something along those lines yeah. we can tell them you just click on you just click on forget password and or, or the or the client services can tell them that yeah. um so that that did help a lot and then 
and then everyone starts upping their game because there's so much more like laser focus mm. on a specific element within within the business, which is which is what we want. We're always trying professionalism. to yeah. and professionalism. It's it, it you know it, it's it's still a business. People are trusting us with their personal goals, the, the things that they want to achieve, the the things that they feel vulnerable about. Um, it's it is again, it's our job to to really put in the maximum effort to try everything we can mm. to help them. Um, and and, and if, if you don't feel like that, then you're not going to fit in at Willow Way because that is all, that's everyone's mindset within the team. From like I said, from someone that joined last week, to someone that's been there from the start. Yeah, um, we're there to help people. They're taking a chance. We need to earn their trust, and then we need to keep their trust and, and help them get results. Mm. Yeah, and I think you've just summed up why why people why there's a whole global trend of people moving more towards more personalized training. Um, it's just so much more than here's a gym membership. We don't care if you come or not. Yeah, just pay us every month, and that's fine. <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah, that's that's true. That's it's a it's a more difficult part to do more effort yeah uh, but I, I i think more rewarding absolutely coming close to the end but just talking more from a personal perspective um you've built what you've built and you've still maintained a very strong fitness lifestyle um so much so that you're still competitive and and competing and so on which is really admirable um how do you stay motivated with a business that's growing um, and a family that's growing as well. Yes. Um, yeah. What What are your main drivers there? Um, I'm, I, I am a very competitive person. Um, Learn to to uh, control it better over the over the years. Um, so I like it. I like it, and, and I think for me, like I, I no, I didn't love. I didn't hate high school. I had good friends, but I didn't love high school and lots of challenges during high school. And, you know, everyone's trying to make teams and maybe a lot of sporting disappointment made me a little bit more um, resilient to to not give up. Yeah. Um, you know, like it's a more of Afrikaans saying, but it would translate to just, you know, the, the, the guy that has the longest breath, who can hold his breath the longest wins, yeah. essentially. Um, and, and, and that's what I believe in, like, Mm. I'm going to hold my breath longer than you. Mm. There's be lots of talented people out there, but I'm going to hold my breath for yeah. a very long time and I'll keep pushing. So I like the competitive um, side of things. And then sometimes you listen to, I don't know, maybe it's your dad or whoever, and they and they talk about the old days and like, you can hear like, oh, the old days, I want to go back to the Nostalgia. old days. Nostalgia. Yeah, it's always like, yeah. oh, life was better back then or I used to be this and I used to be that. And I was like, no, that's not going to be, Yeah, that's not going to, I'm going to do everything as hard as like everything at 100 percent um i want to train as hard as i can and you know it's it's it, it, it's changed a lot over the years it's like 60 minutes maybe 90 minutes a day yes. just because i enjoy it but i'm going to do everything as as well as i can i don't want to have a, a life of of regret mm. one day and and then like you build up your capacity to do more work mm. um as it goes and then your purpose also changes you know like i used mm. to maybe just a little bit um do it do it more for myself and now goals change you know i've got um, um a wife that uh, that gives me wings you know she always she supports everything that i do and i'm um, i'm very very lucky to to have that um and i got two little girls well almost uh two little girls and i'm gonna i got a lot a lot yeah, to that's awesome a lot to do for them yeah it's uh we were having this conversation at the office the other day and I was talking to our customer team and we were talking about how your energy affects your interactions and how people feel and like how you can walk into a room and feel like your energy has just been sapped and the other way around when you feel tired and you walk into a room and the person who's sitting there just lifts you. Um, and to me, what I've noticed is it's a lifestyle thing. Like, personally, when I am living a good lifestyle, i.e. sleeping well, eating well, training, meditating, like taking care of myself, mm. it helps everyone that's around me, whether it's my family or my team members at, at, at the office. Um, 
And then the opposite is like when that falls off, like for me, I always personally find that it's an all or nothing. So if I stop training or if I don't train as I should, I also don't eat very well. Yeah. And that affects everything else like sleep and, and mood and everything. And then that also just makes everything worse. Um, so it's, it's one of those like putting your own mask on before you help other people and it just helps everyone else in, in the process, especially yes. when you have responsibility. That's right. That's very true. I should use that as a, and use some of those clips as a, a nice ad for, for social media for people to join gyms. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Take, take care of yourself and, and yeah. everything would seem a lot, a lot easier around you. 100%. Isyan, thank you so much for your time today. Um, all the way from Johannesburg. Um, well, actually from Pretoria. Yeah, close enough. Close enough. <laughs> so yeah, it's been it's been an awesome chat and I'm sure we'll do this again. Thank you very much, Mark. It's good to be here.